I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, once again, we have Sergey Gorbanov, CEO and co-founder of Axelar Network. Sergey, welcome back to the show and thank you so much for taking the time. Hey Ashton, great to be back. Likewise, there's been a lot that's going on. I've been following Axelar Network. Your team has some huge surprises that I'm looking forward to discussing in this episode. Uh, but for the viewers that didn't see our first interview and people that want to get familiar with Axelar Network, can you start off by giving us a high level overview of Axelar and then we can dive into the details? Yeah, no, for sure. So Axelar is a blockchain interoperability network that was designed to connect uh, different blockchain ecosystems, applications and users, right? And the basic problem that we're trying to solve is to allow users and developers to interact and compose across multiple ecosystems in an easy way. And so we're building a decentralized network and a set of SDKs and services around it to, to, to solve that. Mm, great. And yeah, I think that's a huge issue uh, with the isolation of blockchains and you know cross-chain solutions. Uh, I feel like there's going to be some breakthrough where we can all be one big family and you know blockchains don't have to have all this extra work to communicate with each other. Um, and there are a few other solutions, you know, that have been trying to do this um, because, you know, blockchains have been isolated for feel like 10 years now. Um, yep. Maybe you can talk a little bit about the what makes Axelar Network special in its cross chain solution and why you think it's going to be the best solution for cryptocurrency in a whole. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think a lot of the solutions that you, you've seen, you know, previously in the market, they tried to solve the problem in an ad hoc way, right? So they've been built things like pairwise bridges between ecosystem A and ecosystem B, um, you know, or some other protocols that um, don't really scale across different blockchains. And so the way we've designed Axel Network from the ground up is that you can think of it on the high level as an um, overlay network that serves three purposes. One, it's uh, it provides a uniform routing across different blockchains, right? So no more pairwise connections okay, that you have to manage. B, it provides a translation layer that you can use to go from, let's say, a chain like Cosmos to an, an EDM chain. Those chains speak very different languages. They have different smart contract supports, and you want to be able to translate messages as you go from one of these ecosystems to another. And so that functionality is baked in into the Axel network. Um, and C is the security, right? I think at the end of the day, you know, if we have lots of different blockchains and you want to connect them together, you're going to have to rely on some you know, some intermediary process or service or protocol that helps you do that. And so by having a systematic and uniform way uh, to deal with uh, various uh, security threats, uh, attack models, we're able to improve the security of the overall cross-chain environment. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Thank you for the uh, elaborating on that um, because, yeah, there's a lot of intricacies involved in, in cross-chain solutions and it is not something that can be done overnight. I know your team's been working on sure. this for a long time um, and there's different stages um, and it's a, almost a never-ending progression as you continue to reiterate it and make things better. Uh, can you talk a little bit about where you're at now with all the work that's been done in 2021? Uh, where is Axelar Network at right now? Yeah, so most of the 2021 was spent building, you know, some of the core pipes for this technology, right? So the Axel Network itself, um, some of the core functionalities behind it, we've ran multiple test networks we had you know close to 100 validators participate in it over a thousand developers that were you know playing with the network experimenting performing various cross-chain calls mm -hmm. um, and last uh, month we announced that we're starting the rollout of the main network right it's going to be a phase rollout where, um, you know, that will involve a few different phases. The initial ones include just valid validator onboarding, right, uh, turning on basic asset transfer flows. We opened up uh, a simple application on top of the network uh, satellite um, a couple of weeks ago that allows people to do simple token transfers from one ecosystem to another. But this is just, uh, you know, some of the sample functionalities and we're going to continue um, rolling out and opening up more of them over the coming months, uh, onboarding new chains, onboarding more validators, and then working directly with the developers to help them go cross-chain. This is really our ultimate mission is to allow any application to go cross-chain and that's what we're after. Definitely. And I think that's a great mission. 
And I want to talk about the developers in a minute, but you spoke there first about the validators, the nodes, and running the network. And I'm curious, in your team's work, as you continue to grow out the network, uh, you talk about adding more validators. Um, how do you balance and, and manage you know, validators versus decentralization versus scalability and making sure that everything runs smoothly? Great question. I think, you know, no matter what you do, it's always a trade-off that you have to make, right, in some sense between um, security, speed of processing, right, uh, decentralization, and so on and so forth. I mean, our goal and our philosophy from day one has been to look at projects that established successful, you know, security models in the past. And it's really the only solution that we know is by having a uh, decentralized validator set, right? And an open consensus mechanism. And so, you know, Axel Network was designed around the Cosmos SDK. So we follow like an open validator set where anybody can join, anybody can run a node, anybody can participate. Um, you know, we're setting with an initial validator uh, parameter, which will continue, you know, increasing as we get more performance on the network and as we, um, you know, improve in some of these uh, robustness features. Um, but yeah, I think, um, it is, I guess, we're carefully observing the network, right? We have various tools that have uh, been built on top of it for monitoring, uh, including like explorers, ex including dashboards and so on and so forth. And um, as we get more confidence, as we get uh, more uh, functionality support, we're just going to keep on increasing decentralization, keep on increasing the validator set, because ultimately that's the only way to get security in the space. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Definitely. Yeah, well said. And as you continue to increase those numbers, uh, I saw that the team and the project is expanding hot off the press today in the news. I saw that Axelar was closing a $35 million Series B, which is incredible. Uh, so first of all, congratulations on that. Thank you. And now with that raise closed, what are the next steps uh, with that capital and, and I guess moving towards the next stage of the development? Yeah, uh, I think we're going to continue expanding on three different um, avenues. I think one, you know, we want to continue uh, growing the number of integrations, right, that we're supporting through the Axel network. Mm -hmm. So more chains. Um, we have designed the stack to be able to onboard the new chain in a very easy way. Like for an EVM chain, it's actually like 10, 15 commands that you that you run the network and that's it. For other chains, there is a little bit more work that we have to do if they speak like a, another different consensus language. So we'll have to do this translation layer for them. But, uh, you know, definitely we're going to continue expanding on that. B, we're going to continue expanding just the team overall that uh, continues building the, the core project, everything from engineering to, you know, business development, content creation, uh, documentation. That's very critical for the project. Um, and C, we are just starting to work with uh, you know a lot of the uh, application builders that want to go cross chain, and so we're going to continue supporting them, building you know SDKs, documentation, and uh, we'll use uh, you know parts of the funds to scale those directions as well. Mm. Incredible, yeah. I was going to ask you about the developers um, making DApps cross chain is going to be amazing for the interoperability. But I think building those dApps is, is the first step and making sure yeah. that the development ecosystem is really easy to use and, and understandable. Um, how is your team helping lower those barriers to entry to actually increase the development and want people to start building with Axelar? Yeah, the first objective that we wanted to achieve is to make sure the developers don't have to learn another language, right, to interact and go cross-chain. So the Axel network has been designed with a principle that as a developer, you can go and build on any platform that you're most comfortable with, right? If you like EVM chains on Solana or, or you know, Avalanche, you can go and build there uh, and you can interact with um, what we call as gateway contracts in the same language as you write in your DAP, right? So there are additional function calls that you would have to execute from your application to our gateway contracts. Uh, but from there, our gateways effectively unlock for you composability and communication with the rest of the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to do anything else, right? So that's why we're building the network and the set of services around it to make it easier for the developers to uh, so that they don't have to like relay transactions, pay multiple gas fees across different chains, right? Wait on confirmations and so on and so forth. So we're building all these sets of 
auxiliary services on top of the network to make it easier for the developers to uh, to execute those calls uh, without learning a new language and without having to perform all of those additional services that are that are required to actually scale cross chain. Um, and you know, as you said, it's not it's not an easy journey. Uh, it requires building certain stacks along the way. Um, but uh, you know, I think we're we're here to stay and continue building. Definitely, yeah. I feel like Axelar and, and all these like layer one protocols are like asteroids like flying through space and the and they may collide at some point but the timing has to be right as well because you know you're trying to integrate all of these different blockchains and and at the same time the teams at those protocols are working to continually expand and grow their protocols so do you communicate with the other protocols and like try to make sure that you guys are on the same page with this cross com chain communication or how does that work uh, we definitely communicate, right? I think, uh, you know, when we started a year and a half ago, we sort of had a bet on the multi-chain ecosystem, right? Last year, we spent the time, you know, building most of it. Um, and today, every project is figuring out what is going to be my interoperability or cross-chain strategy, right? Uh, from layer ones that are talking about like bridges to application developers that are thinking, how do I scale my application, right? Like, how do I get more users to access it? How do I get better distribution? And the only answer is to, you know, go cross-chain, right? And, you know, in some sense, um, I think it's a sort of, it's, it's a requirement for some of these applications to continue growing and surviving, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely. And do you, I feel like, 2021 people were saying you know it's the year of nfts becoming mainstream and you know DeFi continuing to explode do you see or foresee in the next year or coming years like one of these it's going to be the year of cross-chain integrations finally like there's a holistic family of all the blockchains are able to speak to each other or will it be like some gradual um, integration that you don't really think about I, I do think, you know, it's starting to be uh, one of the top topics, right? I think, you know, this year we're probably still going to see a large uh, footprint of various like bridging technologies, right? And just people explicitly moving assets from chain A to chain B. But there are a lot of projects that are, you know, integrated directly where this bridging functionality is sort of obfuscated from the users and they don't have to explicitly, you know, move their tokens back and forth. Um, is there going to be a moment where we're all going to say, oh, we need to go cross chain? I do think so. And I, I don't know when it would be, you know, probably over the coming years. And the reason for this is that you know, first applications that start having cross-chain support are just going to have so much advantage compared to the applications that don't have it, right? It's going to be access to more liquidity, access to more users, and access to more distribution, right? And for an application developer, that's what you're seeking for. And so as soon as first, you know, category of project, let's say like DEX is integrate, then every other DEX has to do the same. Otherwise, they're just not going to be competitive in the market and not have the same, you know, liquidity or same user distribution. So, um, you know, maybe not all projects will embrace this at the same time, but I expect categories of different players we've seen um, to kind of embrace it around similar time frames and follow one another. Definitely. Yeah, great point, Sergey. And I think we'll probably look back, you know, years from now and, and, and laugh when we saw that, you know, decentralized exchanges that could only trade Ether tokens between each other and, and, and yep. none of the other ones were isolated. And we'll think, wow, that was crazy. But right now we, yep. we love it, right? <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. So, I, I think, you know, the, the end goal is that users, you know, have any assets, see an application, just go and interact with it, right? And I think, um, you know, I do think we're going to get there. Definitely. And you mentioned as a part of the raise, you're expanding the team and continuing to work on development. Uh, I'm curious for outside people listening in, are you guys looking for more you know, in-house developers? Or are you also looking for other people to help contribute that aren't coders or they can help in other ways as well? Yeah, I think we're looking for contributors on all fronts, right? Everybody from uh, you know, joining the team full time to continue to the core development of the network, but also we have a very vibrant ecosystem of developers around the project, right? So some of the tooling, dashboards, uh, validator, kind of monitoring tools have been built by outside community, uh, you know, that contribute in like pull requests to our repositories. We have people that uh, have built, uh, you know, demos of various bridges on top of the network and, and starting to see early applications, um, prototyping and, and uh, you know, figuring out their integration paths.
We also have lots of folks that helped us build uh, just educational material right around the network. How do you spin up a node? Uh, what does this network look like? How do you relay transactions? actions from one network to their um, so when we're continuing to look for folks to help us create content create education around the network it is a complicated stack and we'll have you know it will be uh, so until we make it easier and more accessible and build very simple apis on top of it and so there's a you know a long journey ahead of us and we're looking for folks to to help us get there definitely yeah and you know you mentioned bridges a few times and i know many people that are familiar with you know bridging uh, from Ethereum to Polygon or from any chain to, to another chain, it seems like it's the best technology that we have to make this intermediary for, for cross-chain right now. Um, what are your thoughts on, is that the best technology we have? And, and I, I feel like there's still a lot of flaws in bridges. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the you know bridges that that people have built, they're either centralized, right, or they uh, pairwise, which doesn't really uh, allow you to continue uniformly scale the ecosystem. So, mm -hmm. you know, as an example, uh, we have built um, kind of a, a bridging application on top of the Axel network, which is satellite, but already has lots of advantages where you, you know, as a user, a you don't have to pay like multiple gas fees and transaction fees. Uh, it has this uniform routing capability where every new chain that gets added gets automatically interconnected with all other chains, right? So it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's a huge, uh, you know, uh, networking effect uh, from that perspective. Uh, but it's, you know, just a sample application. I do think we'll, I do think bridges will sort of stay in some sense because at the end of the day, you know, some people need to move, you know, large parts of liquidity from chain A to chain B, right? Or just rebalance their books in the back end or whatever that is. But I think retail users are going to start accessing cross-chain applications, um, you know, a lot more over the coming year or two. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, thanks for that uh, insight. And pretty much um, I've been following the Axelar updates and it looks like you guys are uh, doing amazing work so far. I think 2022 is going to be a huge year for the viewers that want to also follow along with these updates and also get involved with the community in the ways that you mentioned What's the best way for them to follow along? Yeah, I think a good starting place is our website, right? Axel.network. Uh, from there, folks can find links to various uh, developer communities that we have, including Discord. I think we have over you know, 40,000 folks on, on Discord right now. Um, social channels like Telegram. We have uh, Twitter that's, you know, uh, where we constantly post updates. It's at Axel Accord. Um, and uh, we have links to various uh, developer ecosystem programs. Um, so mm -hmm. people can submit applications. We're going to review them on the back end, um, invite them to various channels, you know, and help them in any way we can. Amazing. Thank you, Sergey. I will leave all those links for the viewers in the description box below. I appreciate you coming on um, to speak about Axelar once again. Congratulations on all of the growth since our last video. I'm, look, I'm looking forward to following up again. So let's definitely follow up in the near future. Sounds great. Thanks for the invite. It was great chatting, Ashton.